It's no secret that humans have a tenuous relationship with the natural world. From pollution to deforestation, people have often had a destructive impact on the environment. But sometimes scientists harness animals to create an entirely new species. Though some people believe it is amoral, scientists continue to design bizarre new animals. Today we are looking at 10 animals created by humans. Scientists in Japan are at the heart of a debate regarding the ethics of manipulating living creatures. In July of 2019, they approved the first human-animal embryo experiments in history. Hiromitsu Nakauchi, who leads the team at the University of Tokyo and Stanford University in California, plans to grow human cells in mouse and rat embryos, and then transplant those embryos into surrogate animals. Nakauchi's ultimate goal is to produce animals with organs made of human cells that can eventually be transplanted into people. If we are able to generate human organs and animals, we could help many, many people," Nakauchi told the Stanford Medicine magazine last year. Japan has overturned a rule that forbid researchers from growing animal embryos spliced with human cells for longer than 14 days. Nakauchi aims to grow mouse and rat embryos with human cells until 14 and a half and 15 and a half days old respectively, according to Nature. Later, he hopes to grow pig embryos spliced with human cells for up to 70 days, pending government approval. Bioethicists say the research could have unintended consequences if some of the human cells were transferred to the animal's brain. Nakauchi told Nature, however, that the interventions are designed to only affect the organ that he plans to grow. This animal truly tests the limits of what is possible in genetic science. South Korean scientists say they have engineered four beagles that glow red using cloning techniques that could help develop cures for human diseases. The four dogs, all named Ruppy, a combination of Ruby and Puppy, look like typical beagles by daylight, but they glow red under ultraviolet light, and the dog's nails and abdomens, which have thin skins, look red even to the naked eye. For the designer bioluminescent buffs out there, red is not the only color for which to choose. The first isolated glowing protein was a green color from the jellyfish Aquaria victoria. Since then, scientists have experimented with replacing different molecules within the protein structure, allowing for the creation of a number of different colored photoluminescent proteins, ranging through the visible spectrum, including blue, yellow, cyan, orange, and of course red. It took nearly 2,000 eggs to make some 1,000 embryos, all of which produced only one Snuppy. But however inefficient, that technology was groundbreaking and means that in the future, genetically modified animals will be able to glow in whichever color a scientist decides. Again, there is an intense ethical debate raging about this science, but the experiment has been repeated several times. As terrifying as it sounds, Randy Lewis, a professor at Utah State University, spliced spider DNA into the cells of his goats. The first was a goat named Freckles, who looks and acts like any of her goat siblings, except for one noticeable difference. She was genetically modified to produce spider silk in her milk. The silk produced by golden orb weaving spiders is tougher than Kevlar, but has the elasticity and lightness of nylon. That makes the silk a very valuable substance. The trouble is that it's impractical to raise spiders to produce enough for industrial use. It took more than a million spiders and 70 human workers working for four years to make a single 11 foot by 4 foot piece of fabric. That's where the goats come in. Now in their ninth generation, these creatures produce about an ounce of the protein per milking session, yielding several thousand yards of a single spider silk thread. Since then, the technology has been purchased by a Canadian company, and the product is being marketed as BioSteel. They sell numerous products for use in construction. The materials they produce are more than five times stronger than solid steel. Featherless chickens could be the future of mass poultry farming in warmer countries, says an Israeli geneticist who has created a bare-skinned prototype. The new chicken would be lower in calories, faster growing, environmentally friendly, and more likely to survive in warmer conditions, claims Avigdor Kahaner of the Hebrew University of Jerusalem. He created his red-skinned chicken by selectively crossing a breed with a naturally bare neck with a regular broiler chicken. Commercial broiler hens were genetically bred to cause them to eat more and gain weight fast, which causes their body's metabolism to operate at higher temperatures than ordinary chickens. Their heart rate can go as fast as 300 beats a minute. This causes them to overheat, especially in warmer climates. Kahaner developed a breed that grows no feathers and have no scales on their legs and feet. After six generations of breeding, he was able to create the featherless bantam chicken, and then he crossbred until he got a large-sized version. There are many opponents of the featherless chicken, considering it to be a prime result of bad science, solely created to benefit our consumption needs. It is extremely controversial and has not been widely adopted since its invention in 2002.
At first glance, the Belgian blue cow appears to be some sort of cartoon superhero jammed inside a cow's body. But this is not a work of fiction. In fact, the Belgian blue cow originated in central and upper Belgium. Belgian blues are recognizable for their extremely muscled frame and huge size. In fact, they actually develop what is called double muscling. They have well-defined backs and loins with strong-looking legs, and bulls can often reach a weight of 1,250 kilograms, while cows weigh about 900 kilograms. While double muscling is natural, the way the mutation has been perpetuated is not. The meat industry selectively breeds animals who exhibit this mutation to produce bigger animals, and therefore, more meat. Because of their abnormally large size, Belgian blue cattle often endure a slew of serious health problems. Once the calves are born, they may have a number of birth defects, including enlarged tongues, which can make it difficult or even impossible for them to nurse. They may also suffer from cardiorespiratory, bone, and joint problems, among other ailments. As a result, most people consider the breeding of Belgian blue cows amoral, and they are not popular. Many tropical frogs are admired for their stunning coloration, but glass frogs go a different route. The skin on their bellies is at least partially transparent, making their internal organs visible from underneath. Now, another frog joins these clear-bellied amphibians, a remarkable little creature from Ecuador, newly created by scientists in 2019. The dark green spots on its back and its call and reproductive behavior mark it out as different from already known frogs. Males guard the eggs, which are attached below a tree's leaves, until they hatch and fall on the below water stream, says Juan Guayasamin of the Universidad San Francisco de Quito in Ecuador. I work with frogs every day, and this is one of the most beautiful species I have ever seen. Not all glass frogs have hearts that are visible through the chest. In some, the heart itself is white, so you don't see the red blood, says Paul Hamilton of U.S. nonprofit organization the Biodiversity Group. Scientists created these frogs as an alternative to dissection, a practice that is increasingly frowned upon in schools. Thus, students can study a living glass frog and view its organs without any sort of cruel operation. Though it's hard to believe, every 10 minutes, another person is added to the national organ waiting list, and every day more than 20 people die waiting for a donor. But what if it wasn't necessary to wait for an altruistic human to provide your vital organs? That is why the world's leading researchers are attempting to splice DNA and grow organs more quickly. In 2017, scientists from the Salk Institute in California tried to grow the first embryos containing cells from humans and pigs. The process proved to be more challenging than expected and was very inefficient. From 2,075 implanted embryos, only 186 developed up to the 28-day time limit for the project. Our findings may offer hope for advancing science and medicine by providing an unprecedented ability to study early embryo development and organ formation, as well as a potential new avenue for medical therapies, says Salk professor Juan Carlos Espesua Belmonte a senior author of the paper and a leading expert in this field. Though the researchers have much work ahead of them, it is certain that this field has an extremely bright future. In March 2019, the Food and Drug Administration lifted an import restriction that allowed Aqua Bounty, a biotech company with facilities in Canada and Panama, to start raising genetically engineered salmon eggs in America, effectively clearing the way for the country's first GMO seafood and first commercially raised GMO animal to come to market. The main difference is that Aqua Bounty's Aqua Advantage salmon grows faster than conventional salmon and therefore gets to market weight in less time. This is desirable for fish farmers because it means the fish requires less feed, which is one of the the main costs in aquaculture. This salmon contains a growth hormone gene from the fast-growing Pacific Chinook salmon and a promoter sequence from the ocean pout. Combined, the gene and promoter sequence, which acts like an on switch, enable the salmon to grow year-round instead of seasonally, like wild or farm salmon. The FDA evaluated the fast-growing salmon and concluded that it was as safe as conventional salmon. The agency determined safety by compositional analysis, basically grinding up genetically engineered salmon and control fish samples and comparing them. In these analyses, the genetically engineered engineered salmon and wild Atlantic salmon were not found to differ. Human breast milk contains valuable antibacterial enzymes that milk from dairy animals did not. Until now, researchers report that transgenic goats can successfully produce milk containing the enzyme lysozyme, and that this milk exhibits an antibacterial effect when fed to young goats and pigs. The researchers hope that in the future, enhanced non-human milk will give an immune boost to children in the developing world where diarrhea takes more than 2 million lives each year. Strange as it seems, these animals are producing human breast milk. 
This will solve problems where there is a shortage of breast milk in an area, thus feeding otherwise starving children. This should have an impact particularly on E. coli-based gastrointestinal diseases, says Jim Murray, an animal scientist at the University of California, Davis, and an author of the study. The team is now repeating the experiment with pigs that will be infected with harmful bacteria to see if the modified milk enhances their natural immune response. As with all the animals on this list, it is somewhat controversial, but many people accept that this particular case is worth the ethical ambiguity in order to save children children's lives. Though it sounds like an animal out of a science fiction novel, the zebroid is a real living thing. A zebroid is the offspring of a cross between a zebra and any other equine, usually a horse or a donkey. Zebras belong to the genus Equus, and as such they can crossbreed with other Equus species. The resulting hybrid is almost always sterile. The three species of zebras have between 44 and 62 chromosomes, donkeys have 62 and horses have 64. Zebroids were originally bred as pack animals in Africa for practical reasons. They are more resistant to certain diseases, such as sleeping sickness, than horses or donkeys. Zebroids for domestic use are bred for the look of a zebra, tempered by the domesticated nature of a horse or donkey. A typical characteristic of zebroids is that their appearance tilts more toward that of an equine rather than the zebra, apart from adopting the stripes. These stripes are generally confined to some parts of the body, such as the legs or neck. Their colors through the legs and belly usually range between tan, brown, and gray with a lighter underside, making the stripes stand out further. 